What's going on, fish heads? John Carvassi, Jekyll Bates, and today we're going to do something super cool. On Instagram, I run, you know, it's the first contest I've done on Instagram and got some really good responses, some really great ideas for fish patterns for these little guys. These little guys being the baby bull shad, the collab between Ketchco and Mike Buca from Bullshed Swim Baits, fame and legendary. So I did a giveaway and asked everybody to comment on what pattern, and then I did a random number generator, and somebody won. Alan Kicker won, and his pattern is a yellow perch. So today, we are gonna recreate a yellow perch pattern on this baby bullshad. I'm really stoked to do it, and it's a cool picture. This happens to be a picture of a yellow perch that was caught in Missouri. What? Yes, there are yellow perch in Missouri. There are also yellow perch in Arkansas. I'm not sure where Alan lives yet, but obviously he has them around him because he knows that it makes an excellent, excellent bait. Um, yellow perch are not everywhere in the country, but you can kind of almost cross-reference them against the pattern of a peacock bass and get a big wider area where you could fish this bait and if you have a little stained water it's even better so what we're going to do today is we're going to start with a white base coat and then we're going to work into how i would design this yellow perch now traditionally on yellow perch there's a good bit of red on their uh, pectoral fins and sometimes as the fish matures you'll find it back towards the tail. We're gonna leave the tail alone on this one as best we can. Um, if there's any overspray that gets on, it's certainly not gonna hamper it. In fact, there have been some times when just to match a tail pattern on a species, I'll go ahead and paint it. We obviously are not gonna clear coat this, but let's get started with that base pattern. I moved my pattern off to the side on my phone so that I can kind of reference it from the side here but you guys are going to get it in one part of the screen up top so that you can play along. One of the things that I always do is I'll hit this with a white base, even if I'm going to put, because I am going to put on a different layer over top of this white before we mesh it. And of course I'm going to, of course I'm going to mesh it. Come on, it's me, y'all. We could do a pretty sexy pattern without a mesh, but I really think kind of make these colors pop. I want a little bit of red to start out with. And I want to do that in an under layer. So I'm going to heat set this off camera and then we're going to add in a red layer to this. Now I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of fade in. I'm going to go from a fluorescent sunburst, which is this color, which is in the chamber right now. I'm going to go from the sunburst down into a red on the bottom. And I'm gonna do that kind of a transition on this, on the under layer, simply because I'm gonna have darker colors eventually up top and lighter colors on the bottom. And I think that that under layer is gonna be a much better transition and much more visible if I do it this way. Because contrasting shades of color really help bring out, it doesn't, I'm just gonna, this is going to be covered on the bottom with red, so I'm just kind of pushing all the rest of this out of the chamber. And then I'm going to come and hit the bottom, eh, probably bottom third of this with a little bright transparent red. I forget, I think it was on some of my YouTube channel comments in regards to why is it so hard to get whites, reds, and blacks out of the chamber when you paint. It just seems like it clings on there forever. It does. Um, I've always found that whites and reds are the worst, but black can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get out too. I want to make sure you guys are in frame, and I might even come back. I thought I had a little bit more paint in the chamber. I'm spraying base layers around 35 to 40 PSI, which is screaming out. Um, once we get into the meat and potatoes of this in this pattern, we're going to come way, way down on our PSI, which is our pressure which is how fast we shoot this bait out. Or, which is how fast this air gets pushed out of here on this airbrush. I just want to kind of seam that up real good. Now that I have this transitional undercoat, I'm going to heat set this really, really well. 
let it cool off for a little bit and then we're going to wrap it in some mesh. Generally speaking, if we were going to be doing a peacock bass, there'd be three bars or three lines. Usually on a perch, it's got seven lines. So when we're looking at how we're going to set up the seven lines, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Works out perfect because you have a little bit less space here, plus that black triangle or, or the that shape is going to be covering the existing shad dot that was originally on this bait, which makes even more sense. Just kind of cover that up. You can barely see it through three layers of paint, but it does come to the front because it's a very dark color. It's a black underneath that where the shad dot was. So you, with most of the time with most baits, you can do a little bit of scuffing on there, but you don't really need to do a whole lot. In this case, we really don't need to do anything except for reprime and repaint and then seal it properly. Seal it twice. That's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to mesh this up. Let me see what I've got here that I want to do. I think this is what I want to use. I don't need a real thick mesh like this has been sprayed and sprayed and sprayed so the mesh will have a tendency to get thicker and it'll hold that acrylic almost becomes like a latex type feel to it um, and you can continue to use it as long as it's not tacky or sticky it's gonna oh Hurricane Sally is forming in the Gulf well I guess y'all know when I'm spraying this video mm, another hurricane in the Gulf we got lucky in Arkansas we are not uh, we're not a Gulf state, but we are the next state up from Louisiana, which did get hit last time and looks like it's going to take a blow this time as well. So if you come down here with me, you're going to see this is pretty much what I'm doing. I am covering this once. In fact, I might just cover it from here to here. Okay. And that way we won't mess with the tail. You don't want to smash this tail down when you're painting it. That's another tip for you guys. If you, if you do decide that you want to paint them, it's totally cool if you're an airbrush artist. Go ahead and paint these little things. Make them your own. These are so cool. And they swim so well. Um, how could you not want to just trick them out? I certainly do. And uh, it's been pretty good to me. I'm going to snip that excess off. Then normally what I like to do is I'll pull any of this excess down over the nose and on this eyelet I'll just kind of hook it around, pinch it off until I've got my alligator clips in place. And I try and make sure that I'm covering as much real estate as I can, if not all of it, which we're going to be able to do on this one. And then just Pull those down tight. Got one that came off there. And that one's going to hold the nose. And you want this down firm, but you also want to leave enough room to where you're not completely covering the bottom of this with alligator clips because you want that spray to go through so it doesn't look all weird and funky on the bottom. So there is that last one. Actually, I want to pull that up just a little bit tighter. There we go. And I'm going to do one more just because I don't like how loose this feels in between. That should be plenty. And now we're going to reprime all of this with white. So the only thing that you're going to see from this orange and red is where the mesh gets pulled off eventually. But we're going to do most of the pattern right here while the mesh is on the bait. I have got white loaded back into the chamber. I'm going to pull this completely off and just give it a good spray. Make sure you get down as best you can on the underside of this and then just even coats run the brush down the entire length you don't want to super saturate it though 
you do want to leave enough to where you can dry it quickly because you just basically you're repriming so that the other colors look true if i were to run colors against that red and orange without priming it again it's going to look really funky so you want that next layer of white over your base layers without taking the little residual bit of white that was in here out i'm going to blend it down and shoot it with this pineapple pearl and i'm going to start right around where the pectoral fins are real light super super light i'm not going to come and recoat this because i kind of want it to pick up some of this white underneath of it And now, anything that's left in here, and there is, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Chamber is completely clean, eh, for the most part. We won't say completely. Um, it does have just a little bit of residual. I'm going to put three drops of this pearl ice in lime. This is a little bit darker of a shade than the traditional pearl lime. This is more of a yellow hue. This is more of a blended. It's got a little bit of moss green in it, and the flake that's in this is much heavier so as it shoots it's gonna you're probably gonna be able to see it on camera it's amazing how much ice and glitter comes out of this and that's something that you need to keep the pressure up on when you're spraying stuff that's got a good bit more glitter in it and the only reason I'm putting the green on at all because it doesn't really translate in that picture, but it is a little bit darker up top. That's the first time that's kicked in. All right. Now I'm not gonna do the black triangles or the black vertical lines with the mesh still on but I am going to give this just a little bit of darker tint I'm going to come back across just the top of the bait with a couple of drops of this detail black magenta those of you that have been with the channel for a while know that I, I'm a heavy user of this stuff it's a great detailing paint and depending on what color you're blending underneath it'll either give it a brownish or a black tone and then I'm going to take just a little bit and shoot it in a couple of random spots across across the uh, bait here and the reason I lay this down again there may there may be some of you that have not been with the channel previously that are here from the, the Instagram and you want to see how I shoot the reason that I bring this across is that it really gives a little bit of a, a depth portrayal to this bait. And you'll see what I mean when I pull it off. But before we do that, the last thing I want to do, clean the chamber out of that dark and I'm going to add back just a little bit of white. Because we don't want this too dark. It's not very dark in the picture. It's a very light yellow color. And now we're going to come back from the tail. I shot the dark across this bait from the head, and now I'm turning this around and shooting from the tail towards the head just to finish off that depth. And if you guys start doing that on some of your blending, it's, it's going to make a big difference. And I'm also lightening this yellow a little bit. All right. I'm not going to completely clean this out. I'm just going to take a little bit of this out of the chamber. Make sure the cleaner is out. And now I'm going to add in this Calm Art. It sh kind of shows you purplish tint. But it really 
is mostly like a silvery glitter. And the reason that I do this, it brings out color, number one. And number two, it adds a little bit more pop to kind of mimic scales and that pearlescence, and that's what it is. It's opaque pearlescence, it's like a clearish silver. Now we're gonna heat set this, come right back in. Now we wanna take this mesh off and see what we're left with. Always like giving this a cool reveal for you guys. I love doing this red underneath, and in this case, red and fluorescent sunburst because of the contrast, because it looks more of a, a distressed pattern. And it has really added in some depth. And if we're looking at comparing the colors, I'll pull this a little bit closer for you guys. I think we're really getting there. So this is where we're at before the lines come on. And these are pretty simple lines. They're not gonna be that difficult. It looks like on this particular fish, and it is fairly small, it's fitting, if you're looking at this, it's fitting in his hand. It's a little bit bigger um, than this baby bull shad, but not that much when you think about it. It's not that much bigger. So this is clearly a juvenile yellow perch. One of the reasons that I love these baby bull shad is that it really, really portrays a small bait fish, a juvenile bait fish in a really awesome way. Got this back on the helping hands. And one of the things that I like to do, if I wanna make sure I line up my verticals on both sides, is I'll come in with a Sharpie or a black marker of sorts. Can probably get away with this Uniball Vision Elite here. And I'm gonna come down the head. And remember, I said one, two, two, and two. And that's gonna accurately portray the seven lines on this perch. So I'm gonna put one dot right here and then line these up on either side. And if you give yourself a top-down view of your bait, it's much easier to make that work if you have a, a dorsal fin and then we're going to do the same thing on each of the other segments of this bait. So that when you're done with it, and that way, when you're looking at it from this side, you can see the dots. And of course, if there's a, a fin in the way, you can see the dots on both sides because you've made them to where you can. And now, you can start out with a little bit of black in the chamber. Now. If you're looking at this, and hopefully you're able to see, if you're on your phone, you might not be able to see it as well, but if you're on your laptop or if you have me on the big screen, which is, I always put myself on the 55 inch, I'll watch a video of mine once just to check it, and I'll check it on my laptop, and then I'll usually check it on either my phone or a big screen, and then I'm done with it. I don't watch the videos anymore. I'll answer comments and stuff, but if you're seeing it on a big screen, you can see that there are actually uh, a lighter color yellow over top of these black vertical lines. And we're going to be able to pull that off once we have the black lines on and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. Um, basically we're going to be using an opaque yellow to finish this off and then maybe a little bit of white on the bottom. But it is there. So you can, the, it almost looks like the black lines are in the background and those yellow um, scales which is what it is, our, um, this is actually too big, but this is what we're gonna be using just in a smaller version. I should have it right here. Don't need a whole bunch. It's just enough to get your stuff going on both, both these sides here for the vertical lines. And now we're gonna bring the pressure way, 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 way down. I'm gonna run pressure around between 10 and 15. And this is where our scrap paper comes into play. And you just want to make sure 
that you have some good control and I'm just going to make a couple of lines to make sure the flow coming out of here is good, there's no clogs, and that I have decent flow. And I'm not pressing down real hard either. I'm just barely pulling that trigger back because the, the effect that I like to get on these is an effect where it looks 3D. So we're just going to pull this and I'm going to go from, when I start this, I'm going to go from the right left so I'm not pushing down and smearing anything that I've already worked on. It just works out better for me that way. Let's see here, let's do it that way. And you kind of want to go at an angle. And then do the same thing all the way up the bait. Maybe a little bit darker on that. There we go. Better. And just continue. And this is, this is a bit of tedious work. But when it's all said and done, it's so worth it. You really, really have a phenomenal product when you just slow down and put a little bit of detail in. Now I'm going to bring this right to the base of this pectoral fin. I'm going to dab this off. And now I'm going to come the opposite way and just finish this. And there we have it. And I'm staying traditional with these coming to a point. And this is just a random stencil. I do not remember where I got this. I think I probably bought it off of Amazon or off of Coastal Air or the Airbrush Mega Store, somewhere along those lines. Now that we flip this bait around, I'm going to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to find my dot that's up on the top of this. And yes, we'll, we'll definitely cover that before we're done. And I'm just going to do the same thing all the way down. And maybe mix it up, find a couple of little other spots on here that I can use because just like in nature, unless you're talking about mathematics in the Fibonacci series, which is a whole different conversation, there really isn't a whole lot of stuff that's perfect in nature, which is why all of our fingerprints are unique. Such is the same for patterns on fish. They get close, but if you look at a bass, the markings on a bass are pretty much like fingerprints as well. They are not alike. And now we'll come here from the tail and work our way back towards the front. We'll make that little V-notch. And it is perfectly okay if you get a couple of extra marks on here. And what I mean by marks, you can see where there's just a little bit of modeling in here. M-O-T-T-L-E not M-O-D-E-L. And we're going to do that as well on both sides. I want to finish up these right quick. Now we've got our seven. I'm going to dab this. And there are just a couple of little spots. And since I have this particular one, I don't know if you guys can see it real well. On, I don't know if the camera is doing it justice. But there are little holes perforated in here that, that came with it, with the stencil. So I'm going to add just a little bit of detailing in on this bait. Maybe a couple down here on the belly. It's just easiest to do that while you have black in the chamber and you're using your airbrush. At least for me, that's how I've found, found it to be the most successful. Just a little spot up here. 
and on the belly there. Now, how do we bury those dots? Super easy. Or as some would say, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Do it the same way. And then just finish it up like that. And now you can't even tell that it was there. Might do one more, maybe a little bit bigger of one on the forehead, top of this bait. One more there. Now we've got ourselves the basic layout for this perch. When you're looking at these stencils, there is a directional pattern to the way this scale runs. There's a, a sharper point on one side and a more rounded edge, I guess, on the other side. And you always want the point aiming towards the head of the fish and the rounded area towards the back. It's the easiest way I know how to describe to you what makes sense to me on fish scales. So I've been kind of thinking and thinking, I think I'm going to stick with what I had thought to do, but I do want to, before I, it sounds good in my head, like I said, that sometimes sentences come out uh, a bit skewed because I'm thinking quickly and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of the pattern. But what I'm worried about here is this looking too dark. In fact, I'm glad I did that because there's still a little bit of black in the chamber. Going back to what we were talking about in the beginning of the video with what's the hardest color to get out of your chamber. It's a toss up folks. Red, white, black, all three are difficult. But I think that might be a little bit too bright of a yellow. Maybe not. No, we're going to give it a shot. I can always come over with that opaque pearl essence and just give it a little extra sheen at the end. I always clean my airbrush chamber out at a high pressure and then I have to remember to bring it back down when I'm going to spray. I'm not going to spray this completely across in all parts. What I'm going to concentrate on are the vertical lines and I'm going to hold this in place as I go and then hit the back area and that kind of mutes that down and then I'll do random spots flip this over to the other side by the end of the time I'm done with the bait these things get so pretzeled up these helping hands if you guys are new to the airbrushing custom game I do have all of those links in the description below on where I get my stuff so help yourself to those links I hope you were able to take advantage of them Most of the stuff that I use is right there in the links. If you have any questions, and I get questions all the time, by all means, reach out to me. Drop me a comment right here in the description below. There we go. Just a few drops of that. Got my pressure back up. Just shoot a little bit of it over. Drop that in the cradle, heat set this. I want to take just a couple of drops of this fluorescent red. That's probably too many. Bring my pressure back down. And I'm gonna use Russ Allen's fin wheel and just drop a little bit of red onto this fin. Grab the other side real quick. 
And that is kind of like the icing on the cake here for me. That's pretty. That's going to look good. Dump the rest of this off and then I'm going to add just a little bit of edging as well in this detail black magenta just to finish off this pectoral fin. Just kind of line the exterior of the fin. Give it exactly the type of, there we go. And then run that down the edge. This is going to be so, so pretty. Super stoked. I can't wait to see what Alan catches with this. We'll start back here. And then work that all the way. Good deal. Now we can put some eyes on. Now, if this were a peacock bass, I would be giving it bright red eyes. Perch have more of a natural yellowish eye. It's got just a hint of brown in there. So these, for this particular pattern, I want to use the lure parts online. And these are the real eyes, quarter inch real eyes. cool thing about these eyes is that they match. They were built as a pair. So a lot of times when you have this particular type of custom eye, you only get like one side. So it doesn't exactly line up on the bait. But this, if you have dark spot up top, it's going to be on top on the other bait as well. So pretty amped about these eyes going on. Add a little bit of super glue. You know what? I thought I was getting low on super glue here. So I have about uh, that much in there. And then I'm like, well, I better get some more super glue because I had forgotten that it never comes full. So this is a full one. It's not even half full. What exactly are we paying for? The packaging? Just saying. They're all like that, though. It's not. I'm not singling out Gorilla. Believe me. But they, uh, they absolutely do not fill those things up before they sell them to you. So there we go. We have got one eye in, second eye going in. Looks very natural. Real good. And, ladies and gentlemen, Alan, here is your custom baby bull shad in a yellow perch pattern, a distressed yellow perch pattern. It's got a lot of depth in it, and I'm very excited about you guys participating in this contest on Instagram. If you guys liked me doing that, I'll try and put one in from time to time. I try and do something... The only one that I really don't pay attention to because I'm just kind of in and out on Twitter and reposting and stuff, but I, I definitely pay attention to Facebook, Instagram, and my YouTube channel. I just finished one up on Facebook. This is the one for Instagram, and when we hit 10K on the channel, I will do a 10K giveaway for the YouTube crowd. Hopefully, you guys are all one and the same. Oh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on the channel this morning. I hope I was able to teach you guys a few things. If you like this kind of content, please make sure you smash that thumbs up button for me. Hit that notification bell so that you see when I'm putting up new content, which is at least four or five times a week. Sometimes it's even more. I, I try and do some tips and tricks for you guys every week and some showcases. I get as many of these spray sessions in as I can. And uh, I just love having you hang out on the channel with me. It's good to see your smiling faces. That is going to do it for me. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.